The increasing visibility of China's People's Liberation Army, the PLA, and especially the People's Liberation Army Navy, the PLAN, has been noteworthy over the past several years, and something we've been watching even more intently as the leadership transition nears and rumors abound of Hu Jintao holding on to the chair of the Central Military Commission position after the transition. Lately, there has been an increase of commentary both within domestic and international media of the party's control, or lack thereof, over the PLA, suggesting that this is a topic of concern prior to the leadership handover. In particular, with the more visible influence of the PLA in foreign policy, there has been a growing voice within the PLA calling for the nationalization of the army just prior to the transition, crossing an important red line for the party, which maintains the army's loyalty to the party over the state as a critical pillar of the party's mandate. These suggestions within the military have caused alarm among party leaders, who see a growing need to balance and consolidate control over the military to maintain a secure grip on power. In addition to the uptick in the discussion of the PLA party relations, the central government has also recently promoted a handful of generals and tightened control over the military via various anti-corruption drives in a bid to reinforce the party's dominance in this relationship. Among this chatter is often the suggestion that Hu Jintao will maintain his role in the Central Military Commission, the CMC, even after he transfers his other roles onto his expected heir, Xi Jinping. This would not be new or unexpected. Former President Jiang Zemin also held onto this role for two years before handing it off to Hu Jintao in the last leadership transition. However, the current situation has changed over the past 10 years, especially the PLA's more visible global presence. Therefore, the motivation for holding on to the top CMC position has also shifted. Jiang and Hu come from two different backgrounds and ideologies, and Jiang retained his position on the CMC after the last leadership transfer in order to ensure and consolidate his control even after he stepped down. As a matter of fact, Jiang still wields considerable control over policymaking from his current backseat position. Although Hu may also have similar motives in mind in this transition, the rising power of the PLA in the past few years has forced the leadership overall to become more adept at balancing their interests and demands. As such, who may deem the move to maintain his position on the CMC as necessary for continuity and to ensure stability ahead of the political transition. With growing tensions in the maritime periphery, Beijing may also see the need to rein in the military to align it with its foreign policy objectives and to deter any potential rogue actions. Given these new challenges in the PLA party relations, the leadership, including the incoming Xi Jinping, may endorse this move to ensure a smooth transition, but it doesn't come without potential troubles. Hu has built his networks in the PLA during his tenure, and his recent move to promote a number of generals helps to ensure their loyalty both to the party and to his own position within the CMC. Xi Jinping, however, comes into the top leadership position with lifelong ties to the military that Hu lacks. As the PLA pushes for more political influence, an incomplete transition of power to Xi Jinping will not only diminish his ability to consolidate control, but may also heighten internal PLA factionalism that is already intense among the various military departments, regions, and personalities. The whole country awaits the transition and watches eagerly to see how the new leadership will assert its authority and address growing economic concerns. Equally important to watch will be how Hu and the leadership handles the transitions within the CMC, and subsequently the PLA's response. The party will not relinquish its premise as stated by Mao Zedong. The party controls the gun, and the gun must never be allowed to control the party. However, given the complexities of the day, between rising economic concerns and the growing assertiveness of the PLA, both in the South China Sea specifically and more globally in general, this transition ensures new difficulties between the party and the PLA, which will test the leadership regardless of who commands the CMC reigns.